Namaste. So for those of us studying and practicing the teachings of consciousness, there comes a time when <laughs> somebody is going to ask, well, what are you into? What are you doing? What are you studying? What is this stuff anyway? And that is the beginning of a certain conversation. I call it the consciousness conversation because it's classic. It happens to everyone I know, and it always goes down in exactly the same way. So <laughs> I've made this into like a script, and I've been testing it out in our chat group, our uh, online community. And it works pretty well to get people focused on the concepts of the four states of consciousness and the fact that you are already it. You are already Brahman. You are already Turiya. And so, well, let's go through it and you'll see how it all works out. So the conversation begins with the question, what is consciousness? Either you ask or your friend asks, doesn't make any difference. That's where it starts. So, okay, you come back with the question, are you conscious? And of course, they're going to say, well, yeah, of course I'm conscious. Well, then how do you know? Oh, uh, well, like, uh, I just know. That's all. <laughs> are you conscious of being conscious? Hmm. Well, yeah, I, I, now that you mention it, I guess I am. Then your consciousness is conscious of itself. Whoa, this is like a big deal. I don't think many people actually think about it ever. But this is true for everyone from the most intelligent human being down to, you know, dogs and cats, <laughs> that they never think of the fact that they're conscious of their consciousness. But, you know, the moment you take a look at it, it's like obvious. Well, yeah, I must be conscious of consciousness because I'm conscious of being conscious. See, this is all very self-referential, and kind of circular reasoning and, and argument. But still, it's true. This is because consciousness is the absolute. Consciousness of consciousness, what is it? It's called Turiya, the fourth state of unmodified consciousness. Now, what is Turiya? Turiya is the original formless awareness equivalent to Brahman, the self of all. Do you know the other three states of consciousness? Usually they'll say, oh, well, um, what are they? The first one is consciousness of nothingness. Now, if you're conscious of consciousness, you're conscious of something, but that something is your own self. At first, when you reach out from the self, there's nothing there. So consciousness of nothingness is the next stage, actually, after Turiya. The first stage, I should say. Although it's called the third state of consciousness, that is reckoning from Jagrat, or external consciousness. But in actual practice, we begin from Turiya and then encounter Sushupti. So most people experience Sushupti as dreamless, deep sleep. You can't know it while you're in it, except in the case of samadhi, where you enter into it consciously and deliberately with awareness. Now, the next question is, are you aware of thoughts and dreams? And, of course, everybody's going to say, well, yeah. So, consciousness of thoughts and dreams is called svapna, or internal consciousness. What's the difference? You can ask them. What's the difference between thoughts and dreams? 
And if they're intelligent, they'll say, well, thoughts are when you're awake and dreams are when you're asleep. And that's right. There's no difference. They're both the same. When we're awake, we call them thoughts. And when we're asleep, we call them dreams. Thoughts are impressions or mental images of things that we have experienced both externally and internally. So these thoughts or impressions contain information. And this information can be of any kind, verbal or nonverbal. They can be dreams. And when you have a dream, it's because you accepted or took in an impression during waking consciousness and were unable to fully process it, to fully digest it, to graft it onto the tree of meaning that we call the mind. So dreams, well, there are actually several types of dreams, but 95% of dreams are of thoughts that you had during the day or experiences you had during the day that you could not completely process. And the dream is working out the extra added meaning from the experiences. Now, there's one more type of consciousness, the external consciousness, or jagrat. Jagrat means impressions of the world obtained through the bodily senses. Again, they can be verbal or nonverbal, but all of them are impermanent, unsatisfactory, and not self. That means they're suffering. Suffering is because no matter what kind of experience, no matter what kind of acquisitions, no matter what kind of upadis <laughs> that you add on top of uh, your original self-awareness, they're never perfect. In fact, they're always imperfect, unsatisfactory, and that means suffering. See, out of ignorance, we create desires, and then we take action to try to satisfy those desires. And that creates karma, which leads us towards death. So, this is all suffering. The acquisition of a bodies and senses in a world full of objects, and then our relationships and attachments and identifications with those objects and so on and so on and so on, the actions we have to take to maintain that this is that and blah, blah, blah. And of course, we're going to be held responsible for all of that, even though maybe 90% is things that we didn't choose or wouldn't choose for ourselves. But still, the way we deal with them creates karma, and that karma is going to hold us responsible. So here's the chart, the good old chart of the four states of consciousness. You should memorize this because this gives you the raw material or the data, the original view to answer any question about consciousness. Well, almost any question, at least the basics. <laughs> so what is it about consciousness that is usually misunderstood by the average person? Well, first of all, there are four states of consciousness, not just one. All four are available all the time. Now, these four states of consciousness are actually awareness distinguished according to objects. Only Turiya consciousness is whole and unconditioned. The others are partial and conditioned. In other words, suffering. Isn't it that in material consciousness, we always feel incomplete? We always feel like we need something, huh? something external to make us complete. I mean, maybe it's just a good night's sleep and a good meal, you know? <laughs> but whatever it is, we think we need something external to the self in order to feel complete and satisfied. That's because, as I mentioned above, every material impression is unsatisfactory. If we're always unsatisfied, how can we be happy? So the only possibility then is to drop the desires that cause us to have these unsatisfactory experiences. 
Now, what is the nature of awareness? Awareness is like a mirror. A mirror does not change its nature, but conditioned by externals, it reflects whatever is put in front of it. Similarly, awareness conditioned by externals becomes consciousness. Now, for example, this mirror can reflect a blue cube. And guess what? It takes the form of a blue cube. Or it can change form and take the shape of a red polygon, and it reflects a red polygon. So all these changes are only temporary. There is no change in the actual nature of the mirror. Similarly, there is no change in the actual nature of pure awareness. That unchanging, unconditioned awareness is you, the self, the being, the existence, the absolute existence that underlies what you call your life. So you are consciousness. Wherever you go, you're the same conscious being. In all states of consciousness, you're the same conscious being. In youth, middle age, and old age, you're the same conscious being. Every time you check, every time you look within, that same shining mirror-like consciousness is there. It never changes, just like the mirror. You can put all kinds of upadis in front of it, and so it apparently becomes a mind, a body, activities, feelings, emotions, etc., but that's not really you. The fact that you perceive it means it is separate from you. This is duality. So in our next video, we're going to go over how this reflection of consciousness in the mind and intelligence, in the senses and their objects, this reflection causes an inversion. Uh, just like a mirror always reflects the backwards, uh, right to left, left to right. So in the same way, conditioned consciousness always reflects a distorted, backwards view of reality. And this leads to all kinds of problems. <laughs> but this knowledge, this teaching of the four states of consciousness eradicates the ignorance that causes us to identify with conditioned consciousness and its objects. The fact that we perceive consciousness in its conditioned state as, for example, the external consciousness of the world, the internal consciousness of the mind, and even the consciousness of nothingness during deep sleep, shows that these consciousness states are different from the self because you can't perceive yourself. But you can know that you are the self, you are Brahman, you are the absolute truth. And on that basis, you can easily attain enlightenment. That is the point of all of this. Aung Tat Sat, Aung Shakti Aung, Aung Namah Shivaya. <laughs>